Hey, what's up, Blender users? I am Jonathan, and yes, I changed my name again from Inisting Tyrant to Jonathan because this is just my name, and I want to represent me like that on the internet. And this is going to be also my last name change. Change, I promise. So, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add these hard surface details to your models without having to model them um, by yourself. And I'm also going to show you a technique how you can create these um, displacement maps from scratch procedurally uh, with the help of a software. So, okay, let's get started with creating these displacement maps. Mm. I found this really cool software called JSplacement and when you open it, it opens like that and you have here your menu and when you click on it you can see the different uh, styles of displacement maps. By the way, this software is completely free and I'm gonna put a download link in the video description. So what I like is not the classic one, this is mm, like very blocky. Um, and a bit too messy for me, so I will go with the second option, which generates these kind of tiles. And they are also completely seamless and perfect for our models. So when you have a texture which you like, you can just uh, you can just hit save height, and it will save as an 8K image. So next, you want to open Blender. Mm. And what we want to do is change to cycles, feature set experimental, and because my GPU is stronger, I'm going to also change my device to GPU. Mm. There are two different ways on how to use this displacement method. First, you can just add uh, to whatever object you want. Um, today, I'm going to use just a torus. Um, you can add just a lot of subdivisions and then a this place here, uh, yeah, displace modifier, hit new, and then with this icon you can directly go to the textures tab and then select your texture and displace your model. This has, um, why this is maybe a method for some of you uh, is because you can in the end convert your displacement into mesh which you can edit in the end. So if you want to add like something fr from your own, you can do that with the displacement method, but it will slow down the viewport and so I won't use it in this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to use the displacement node. I know that um, there is an older tutorial from, uh, I think, Lab Alexandrov, who also did this method, but, method, but in, he did it in Blender 2.79 and only gave you one displacement map, so I thought let's make a new tutorial in Blender 2.8 mm, with also like this JSplacement software so you know how to get these displacement maps. Okay, what we want to do first is mm, play around with the UV so it's mapped correctly. The subdivisions etc. will be our last step. So we add a new material and get an image texture and then open our displacement map. So here I have it and I just plug it into the color, um, base color and then I go into look dev and as you can see it's completely messed up um, and it doesn't look right. So we are going to go into the edit mode, press U and reset. Um, what this does is, I haven't pressed it yet, um, what this does is uh, when I go into the UV editor and select the image. Um, so as you can see it's just uh, a Blender has ordered all the faces like this which is not what we want. So we're gonna press, press U and reset and now every face includes the whole image. Mm, so what we want to do to just make it look better is select shift select one face press U again and follow active quads so it lays them down in this shape and when we now select them here and scale them down you can see that it just it just works and because this is seamless there will uh, you won't see any seams etc. So I'm gonna make it just a little bit 
bigger like this. So this is the texture we're going to go with. And in 2.79, you just had to plug the color to the displacement input here. But um, since I think 2.80 or 2.79.7, you have a separate displacement node. And of course, displacement goes into displacement and color goes into the height. So right now, you can't see any displacement, just the bump. Mm, this is because we are still in look dev and have only set displacement to bump only, but we want to set it to, uh, to displacement and bump. Mm. And now what we want to do next is add the subdivision surface modifier. And because we have set it to experimental, we can set it to adaptive, which just makes it like it uh, subdivides everything which is uh, near the camera more than far back. So you can have very high subdivision rates where you can see a lot of where you should see a lot of detail and so you're uh, having much more resources in the end so we're just going to add a camera oh we still uh, had a camera from the default scene move it a bit back rotate it i'm going to just uh, adjust the focal length to like this so we get most of the torus and now um, the displacement part is ready and we can now just play with the colors. So for the colors uh, I like to use a color ramp. Just plug it in there and when you just move one slider you can see what it does. So we're just gonna adjust, adjust the colors. For example I want let's say green torus. You can make it like this. Add some more color variations and this is now the color I will be going with. Okay, what uh, you should have done from the start is save your blend file. So I'm just gonna save it because uh, if you really up the subdivision rate, the um, dicing scale, it can crash pretty easily. So when we now go into the rendered view, uh, you can see it looks like completely messed up. This is because we have set the scale way too high, so I'm setting it to 0.5, maybe 0.3. I think 0.3 or 0.4 is often good. Yeah, let's go with 0.2. Mm. And to preview our final displacement, we would have to set our subdivision preview dicing rate, I think it's called, uh, lower because it's set to 8 and when we for example set it to 3 we can see that it looks a lot better. Maybe I can set it a bit lower 0.15 yeah, I, think, I think that's good. So but I won't set it any uh, lower right now what you can do is adjust the dicing scale for the final render, for example 0.8. Mm, this will give you much more detail. Okay, now the last thing is to prepare your scene mm, for whatever you want to render. Because I imagine this being, for example, a spaceship, I'm just going to add a star field in the background. So uh, for now I disable the subdivision mm, and I'm just gonna go into the world settings add a noise with a scale of 400 detail of 4 and a color ramp and plug the color into the factor and the color into the color of your background and then just move the slider until you get a star field like this. So okay, what is maybe not uh, what is maybe a nice touch is like some kind of glowy sphere. I always like this kind of. Mm, yeah, I, it's hard to describe. You're gonna see what I mean. Uh, right now, I move the light with um, Alt G to the middle, 
mm, just so it will be a light source. And now with a glass shader you can see what it does. And up the roughness and maybe the light can be a bit a bit darker like this. So now the whole scene is very dark and because this is just a sci-fi scene we can literally do anything we want so I'm gonna just add a aerial lamp like this give it a, th a strength of a thousand add some more for key and fill and a nice backlight this and now our, s our scene should be lit okay so it's maybe a bit too strong so we're gonna set it to 700 500 maybe and so this to a thousand and this to 500 so now everything is well lit Maybe a bit too bright, but um doesn't matter for me now. So this is what I will be going with. And if we now enable our subdivision surface modifier again, maybe set it to smooth shading and this also give it a little bit of subdivision, set it to smooth. And if we now press render, first I want to set my tile size to 250 because I'm rendering on a GPU. And if we now press render, it can take a while, but in the end, you should have um, all your hard surface details on your mesh. So what I just did is um, put the resolution percentage uh, to 26% because this um, style of modeling, I would say, renders very slow. And what I can see is that I set the strength a bit too high for me, I think. Mm, but in the end, it uh, just depends on what you like. And yes, so this is how you um, how you model with displacement maps. If you, for example, only want like a, f a small part of your model being displaced, you can just add a new material um, with the displacement node etc and then go into edit mode and assign only a few faces to this material for example if I would now assign these faces to this material they won't be displaced like this but uh, well okay it just looks uh, pretty bad but this is how you can um, displace only a part of your mesh okay so that's it for the tutorial I hope you like it consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any more tutorials and I'm going to see you in the next tutorial.